My name is Ron LeBlanc and I'm the City Manager of Durango, Colorado. The purpose of this presentation is to prepare some uh, information for the public uh, that can be used um, to describe what the city has done to date in evaluating the uh, Santa Rita wastewater plant and also what we have done in preparation for uh, evaluating uh, alternate sites for the plant. First of all, we started off um, with the City Council goals. Uh, there is a City Council goal that, uh, that we maintain city infrastructure, but for a, a capital improvement project, we first have to find out if it is functionally feasible. So the city has engaged two different engineering companies. Uh, one uh, is Dewberry Engineering that looked at biological nutrient removal and the second is Mulhern Engineering that looked at alternate sites. So once we determine if those sites are feasible, we look at the financial feasibility and that uh, it means that we need to go out for bonding or borrowing. Uh, we need to get a loan to construct the new plant. And then lastly, the City Council must determine whether any of these sites um, is politically feasible. And there are a lot of neighborhood concerns that council um, might uh, take into account and also the um, rates that may be affected by a new plant. Two of the biggest complaints that we have heard so far regarding the existing plant at Santa Rita Park are odors and secondly that the land that the plant is currently occupying is located near a popular park and perhaps if we could relocate all or most of those structures, we could expand the park. So let's look at odors. The current plant is um, several years old, uh, built in the mid 80s. The technology for odor control was not uh, as effective as a new plant. If we build a new plant on any site, uh, the odor control will be a priority. And secondly, we can retrofit the existing plant for odor control. And on this slide, we go into some detail. Uh, the last time we removed a digester, which is one of those buildings that uh, occupy the site, we didn't have any backup. So we received quite a bit of public complaints about odors. A new plant would have backup systems and additional odor control systems. On March 3rd, the City Council reviewed the Utility Commission's recommendations for three sites. The first site is depicted on this map. Site number one would be to move the plant to the southern end of Santa Rita Park and taking up about three and a half acres. Site number two that was recommended by the Utilities Commission is at Cundiff Park. Cundiff Park is on the opposite side of the river from Rivergate, which is a mixed-use uh, development including condos and the uh, Animus Surgical Hospital. Uh, Cundiff Park was purchased by city funds matched by GOCO funds, which are lottery funds. The sale of parkland uh, would be required uh, and that is a uh, public, requires a public vote. The third site, site number three, is in a open space parcel that lies below the new Mercury Payment System headquarters. Although the Utilities Commission uh, called the third site, a surrogate site for another site which is across the river that I'll describe in a moment. Site number four is depicted on this map. It consists of three parcels. Uh, the names of those parcels have been um, um, disclosed in public by, um, not, not by city staff, but by others. So uh, for the purpose of this presentation, uh, I'm just gonna say that there are three parcels on the other side of the river adjacent to Animus Surgical Hospital. We hired Mulhern Engineering to look at additional sites. Mulhern was asked to examine 
two sites of their own choosing south of the high bridge. One of those two sites had to be an evaluation of the current South Durango Sewer District site. Mulhern came back to, the, to us and asked if they could look at sites above the high bridge as well as below the high bridge, and we said, sure. So what this map depicts are some sites that I'll describe that Mulhern brought to our attention. So the larger green hashed area is the La Posta Road area. And according to Mulhern, we could put a wastewater treatment plant anywhere in that green area. The cost of a new treatment plant is approximately $63 million if you're building it on a new site anywhere. Then you would have to add the conveyance cost of piping from Santa Rita Park to wherever that new site is located. That would include pipes, river crossings, lift stations, etc. The second site that Mulhern brought to our attention is known as the Pepsi site. And the Pepsi site is adjacent to the La Plata County Jail in Bodo Park. We also uh, found out that Mulhern examined additional sites that were not feasible. Um, one of those sites uh, was the old rocket drive-in site. Another site uh, was um, located on the Animus La Plata uh, project uh, near the pumping station. And they also looked at the dog park. So let's start with the options. So we could uh, expand Santa Rita Park. And one of the questions that uh, remains if we expand uh, on Santa Rita Park is uh, the um, uh, sequencing of how we construct a new plant in addition to uh, how we keep the existing plant open. So if the new plant were to move on any site, uh, we'd have an opportunity to remove some of the structures at Santa Rita Park. And the question becomes for the city council, who would pay for the removal and demolition if the sewer fund were tasked with the demolition costs, then the sewer rates go up. If the parks and recreation fund is tasked, uh, with that uh, um, demolition, then we will be taking sales taxes and diverting them for that purpose. So if you look at the, the site, if uh, I'll go back for a minute. Uh, this map shows if we went to the Pepsi site, the hashed area will uh, be uh, available for Parks and Rec. And then on this map, if we went to La Posta site, uh, more of that area is uh, available for parks and recreation. In either scenario, there will remain appurtenances and facilities on La, the Santa Rita site that cannot be removed. And in fact, the operation of the plant would occur at two different locations. So if you use a marginal dollar argument how many soccer fields, sand volleyball cor courts, et cetera, could be built for the amount of money it would cost to demolish parts of the Santa Rita plant? On August 12, there was a public meeting held uh, at City Hall. And during that public meeting, citizens were allowed to question uh, city staff and Mulhern um, engineering. One of the questions that came up was, can the plant be relocated across the Animus River to the north on a portion of the smelter site, which is the dog park? I'll get into those answers in a second. Second question, can the plant be relocated across the river to the Animus La Plata pumping plant site? Could the plant be downsized to reduce costs? Should credit be given 
in the cost evaluation for land that is reclaimed at the Santa Rita site? And what about South Durango Sewer District? I'll attempt to address each of those. The Durango off-leash area, otherwise known as the dog park, is about 26 acres. That site was a smelter used for um, grinding up ore into uranium. And the disposal of the parkland may require a public vote. The site is encumbered based on UMTRA, the Uranium Mill Tailings Remedial Act. Most of the tailings were removed from the site. However, there is a large portion of the site encumbered by heavy metals, which is a result of slag, the byproduct of milling ore. I would also call your attention to the restrictions and requirements from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and the U.S. Department of Energy that says new construction and or excavation or soil removal requires permission from both CDPH and E and DOE. That will require radon mitigation, grading and excavation of underground piping, tankage, building footings, subgrade prep could result in exposure to or release of contaminants and potentially a requirement for further cleanup. So that site was not um, pursued. And I'd like to add a few more points. Uh, if we did build on that site, the effluent from the plant, the nearest discharge point would be Leitner Creek. It would be upstream of the Whitewater Park and upstream of the intake for Lake Nighthorse. So the logical solution with that would be to extend a pipe downstream below the intake for Lake Nighthorse. It would also require a new bridge to access the site. The wastewater division operates many heavy pieces of equipment that would have to access the site via this new bridge, and that would require an access permit from the Colorado Department of Transportation the access to the highway needs to be reviewed by CDOT to have the proper setback from the intersection of highways 160 and 550. The site would remain visible uh, from the highway, and it's actually closer to the downtown and within sight distance of several hotels. So let's look at the ALP pumping plant site. There is insufficient contiguous area to put a plant at that site. There, the, the property is encumbered by multiple easements um, and we do not own the site. So modifying those easements would require approval of the Animus La Plata Water Conservancy District the Animus La Plata Operations and Maintenance and Replacement Association, and the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. Those three agencies are the same agencies we are working with and currently have been working with to open Lake Nighthorse for recreation. And there is no indication it would be any easier to modify those easements. So at the very best, with a modified easement, no more than 6.5 contiguous acres would be available. The site on the plus side has no topographical challenges. Uh, excuse me, the site has topographical challenges. And there would be significant uh, grading and removal of overburden uh, to level the site. Some of those uh, disrupted areas may contain contaminated soils. The sewer line would cross over a 72 inch water pipeline and that conflict would be a concern to the operators of the ALP pump facility. Would still be visible uh, along the river corridor and visible to highway traffic. 
South Durango Sewer District operates independently of the city. All of the land from the high bridge extending out to Three Springs is serviced by the South Durango Sewer District. This is a high growth area. All of the population estimates used to size a future plant took into account the drainage and, and treatment area of South Durango Sewer District, so we didn't count total population. We only counted the population that would drain uh, their uh, wastewater to the Santa Rita uh, pump station, Santa Rita uh, plant, when we were calculating the size of the new Santa Rita replacement. South Durango Sewer District currently has 35% um, of its capacity um, that is being used, so it has a lot of growth potential, but it is a very small plant compared to what is needed for the remainder of the city. There's not sufficient flat land on their site to add a larger plant or a second plant. When we plan a capital facility that is as important as a wastewater treatment plant, we are required to plan for a minimum of a 20-year planning horizon. The Durango plant is sized at 3.28 million gallons per day, and that serves a potential 26,294 people uh, at 125 gallon per person capacity. We are different from many other cities. Fort Lewis College creates a challenge in terms of wastewater management. We are a tourist destination. On most days during tourist season, uh, there will be uh, over 30 to 32,000 people in town. Even during the slack periods and shoulder seasons, people come to Durango because we are a regional center for entertainment, restaurants, education, banking, and so forth. So we have to plan for that 34,000 population, even though the census says our population is 17,800. The 20 year planning horizon is also required as uh, a way for us to uh, obtain financing. So the proposed plant will be designed for a capacity of 3.28 million gallons per day, 7,825 pounds per day of biological oxygen demand, which is solids, a 9.3% increase in flow and a 30% increase in load. This 20% planning horizon is a requirement. In other words, we cannot obtain financing unless what we're building is going to last 20 years. So over the past six months, the wastewater treatment plant has treated between 4,100 and 5,900 PPD, BOD5, which is 68% and 98% of the current plant's rated capacity. The factors going into the size of the wastewater treatment plant include daily population fluctuations, maximum daily flows and loads, peak hour flow, composition and strength of the waste. Our biggest challenge is the BODs, biological oxygen demand, and nitrogen load from the winter festivals that have a short duration and a high load. It's also when we discharge into the river when the river is at a very low flow. Our population estimates that we've used in the various engineering studies are intended to be conservative. There is a marginal cost of making the plant larger that initially is much less than the cost of expanding the capacity of the plant in the future. $58 million improvement to Santa Rita plant addresses both the nutrient removal 
and expanded capacity of the plant. Treatment plants are designed for two purposes. One is the flow or hydraulic capacity, and the second is the biological load or the strength of the effluent. It is the biological load that is currently driving the expansion of the plant. It is not correct to assume that the plant is only at half the ultimate capacity today. Instead, the current plant is pushing the limits of treatment for what it was designed as a 3 million gallon per day plant. This chart shows the various components and what those components are at the various locations. So if we keep the plant and remodel it at the present location, Santa Rita Park, the estimate is 58 million. And I should point out that one of the troublesome trends that we are seeing is on the front range, bids for public infrastructure have increased dramatically in the last 18 months. We've had two engineering companies tell us they are experiencing dramatic increases in bids. Locally, we've checked with other agencies. City of The town of Bayfield, the county, and the city have all experienced dramatic increases in bids. So we are concerned that being as isolated as we are, and given the fact there are no local contractors capable of a complex project like this, we might be at the mercy of the bidders who would submit proposals to build us a new plant or remodel the existing plant. So continuing with this chart, La Posta Road, the treatment plant cost would be 62 million, and I'm going to round off. There would be some lift station costs, some conveyance pipelines, and land for a total of 93 million, or if you run a round up, it's 93.7 million, it's almost 94 million. And if we go off river at the Pepsi site, for example, it'd be about 63 million for the plant, 5 million in the lift station, 7 million conveyance, almost 4 million for land, 79 million total project costs. These costs are just capital costs for example, the off-river cost also includes, also um, would affect the operating cost, and that's not depicted on this uh, chart. So back to the water treatment plant size. If we're going to move the plant, we want to be able to expand that plant and modify that plant to meet future requirements, and we need to plan ahead so that whatever future site we select, uh, that it has sufficient room to make those modifications. The city has examined other communities around Colorado to see if our costs are in the ballpark of experiences that other cities have recently undertaken for wastewater treatment plants. And on this slide, you'll see a number of cities that may or may not, in your mind, compare. But let me just pick out a couple uh, and explain why they're on here. The uh, city of Louisville has a very, very similar size as the city of Durango. Its treatment plant is 2.5 million gallons a day, and it will serve a population of 23,000. And the metric that the engineers use is um, how many gallons per capita. So it's 109 um, gallons per capita. What happens in Louisville on a daily basis is people get up and go to work, but they go to work somewhere else. They don't stay in Louisville. That's the opposite of what happens in Durango. We have people coming here to go to work. City of Evans, same size as Durango, Again, 2.88 million gallons. Serves a population of 25,000. City of Evans doesn't have a college. It's not a tourist destination. So they can get by with a smaller plant. But when you look at Vail and Avon, that are resort communities, for the size of their population, you can see 
how the expense goes up. So, for more information on this topic, you can visit our website, www.durangogov.org/utilities. Thank you for your patience.